Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel DIY with Mini John. I'm Nishant and this is my basement workshop. In this video, I'm going to give you a short preview of Makita SJ401. This is not a sponsored video. I bought this machine with my own money and I have used it for about a month now. And after using it, I thought I should make a small review of my experience with the machine. Out of the box, this machine comes with a small toolkit that contains few hex keys and a set of spare blades. These are all pinned blades of same configuration. And an instruction manual in this handle which also contains the warranty card. This machine comes pre-installed out of the box. You don't have to install any parts of this except for the blade. I'll show you how to install the blade now. First you have to loosen this clamp and then turn it anti-clockwise and then you can remove the blade and to install it you just have to make sure that it catches on the V groove beneath the table and catches on the V groove above the table. Then you can slightly tighten the nut to hold it in place and then push down the clamp. You can rotate this clamp to increase the blade tension. Rotating it clockwise will increase the blade tension. With some practice, you will realize the proper blade tension that you have to put in depending on the projects that you are doing on this saw. This particular machine is 220 volt and the motor is 50 watt. That might sound like a very low powered machine, but it's enough for the job that this machine has to do. There is no demarcation on this machine as to where it was made, but the box says it was made in Taiwan. This slot on the back is to install a spare light in case you need a spotlight to focus on your intricate work. I'll turn the machine around and show you the other side of this machine. This knob can be loosened and tightened to change the height of hold down clamp. This tube has a small pump mechanism installed on top of this machine and that blows little air on the part where the blade is cutting your work so that it clears out the debris and you can see your cut line clearly. This knob in front could be loosened to change the angle of table. It could be rotated up to 45 degrees on left and 15 degrees on right. It has a small scale in front where you can read the angle. There's a small box over here that says you can store your blade, but it's not visible. You can't see whatever is stored in that box and it's very difficult to retrieve blades from that. So I guess it will be empty. I'll turn the machine and show you the front face of this machine. Now there's a power switch that comes with a lockable key. So if you pull out the key, the switch cannot be turned on. So if you have a workshop where there are visitors or if you have small children that go around your workshop, then you can remove this key so they will not be able to turn the machine on. The speed can be controlled through this regulator. It goes from 400 strokes per minute to 1600 strokes per minute. I'll turn the machine on and show you. It's vibrating a lot because I have placed it over my table saw. If you properly install it on a countertop or 
your workbench, it will not give you any vibrations. And there's a dust collection port over here. So whatever dust falls, it, you can attach a vacuum over here and collect the dust. Even though the sides of this machine are open, so the dust is going to be scattered everywhere, but still a majority of dust will be pulled out through the vacuum. Now for the size of this machine, the top is about 15 inches by 9.5 inches. The total throat capacity of this machine is 16 inches from blade to the back part. And that's all there is to know about this scroll saw in terms of specifications. I will put this machine on my countertop and show you a few cuts. I will turn on the machine and show you a few cuts. The blade I am using is the blade that came with the machine. That's the lowest speed, 400 strokes per minute. That's about halfway. That's all for this video. I hope you found the video to be helpful. If you did, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. I'll keep posting more DIY content. If you have any questions or doubts regarding this machine, you can post them in the comment and I'll try and answer those for you. I have purchased this machine in India and it runs at a voltage of 220 volts. There might be some minor differences in the machine depending on your locality, region or your local regulations, but the functioning of the machine remains the same. Thank you for watching.